Hi, I'm Sarah, and a few weeks ago I joked about colouring in a Stormtrooper colouring page because Stormtroopers are already white. I've got your next challenge already picked out. <laughs> Stormtroopers are white, Shane. <laughs> so I guess we're done? But in reality, white characters and objects have been one of the most requested tutorials on my channel because how do you colour a white character on a white page? So today, we're back to colour in our Stormtrooper because colouring white objects isn't as confusing as it sounds and the end results can be pretty cool. At some point in a colouring page, you've probably come across a white object or character and been a bit unsure about how to colour them in. My six-year-old is going through a phase of loving 101 Dalmatians and he has resorted to turning the colouring pages into informational posters because he's realised there's nothing to colour. Whenever I'm unsure of how to colour something, I always start by finding a reference image. Looking at other photos or images can help you to see what colours make up an object and the same applies to white objects. So before we start colouring, let's quickly take a look at some white objects and see what colours and shading they use. So here I have a white flower with a little bit more lighting on the left and a little bit more darks on the right. So I'm just going to eye drop here in Procreate the lightest and the middle tones and then the darkest colours on the left. And on the right side here where it's a bit more shaded, I'm going to do the same thing, picking the lightest tones, the middle tones and the darkest tones. Now these look like whites and greys, but interestingly, if we hide our base layer and look at the actual colours, even the lightest colour is not actually white. It's actually a very light grey. So already you can start to see that this white flower actually has no white in it at all. It's made up of a variety of gray tones. So I'm just gonna repeat this same process here on this swan. So we'll take the lightest colors and I'm just going to try and pick a variety of colors going from what looks like the lightest values through to the darkest values here. And as you can see, we have a similar thing where it's a lot of greys. The difference with this image is that there is a lot of contrast here. So I wouldn't be surprised if this white is actually a very close to a straight white. And I think we could probably get some very dark, almost black in this as well. So now that we've picked our colors, let's turn off our layer and see. And yes, as you can see, that white basically disappears. That is a white and we have our range of greys almost to a black, but it's not black, it is a very dark grey. The key to these examples so far is that the undertone of the greys is all the same. So we don't have a mix of a warm and a cool grey. In each example, the greys all use the same base colour, so they're kind of from the same colour family. Let's have a look at one more example. So in this last example, our entire scene is white. The only reason we know what this object is, is because of the shading and the different values. That's the light and the dark in the scene. So let's pull out our colors. And again, we can see we have just a range of whites to the light grays. There's only one section here that uses darker grays and that's where there are some really deep shadows underneath the pillows. The rest of it is fairly light. But again, these greys will come from the same color family and that's probably the biggest key that you need to keep in mind when you're choosing greys to color something white. They need to come from that same base color. So I'll pop all these images in my blog post if you'd like to take a closer look or use them as a reference for your coloring pages. You can find that in the video description below. So now to our Stormtrooper. If Stormtroopers were actually just colored white, they would look like this. But instead, the white we perceive is actually made up of a range of other colors determined by the environment and the lining around our character or our object. So in a scene like this, our white stormtrooper actually is made up of a lot of blue grays. Whereas a scene like this, where our stormtroopers are inside with artificial lighting from different colors, there is no white at all. There's not even gray. We actually have a mix of different colors. When it comes to coloring white, there are two main things that determine the approach you'll take and the colors you'll need. And that is texture and the lighting or the environment that it's in. But if this all sounds too hard already, don't worry. Because if you know how to shade and blend colors, then you know how to color white objects. 
So let's just do this. I'll pop a link to this coloring page from Crayola on my blog post if you'd like to color along, along with the exact pencils I'm using from my Prismacolor set. Most pencil sets have a range of greys that you can use as a starting point. They'll usually include at least a warm grey set and a cool grey set and often a green grey as well. I've pulled out some of the greys from my Prismacolors here and I'll list these in my blog post if you'd like to try them on your own pages. Any of these will work depending on the colours you are using in the rest of your image and the mood or lighting you are wanting to create. The cool greys are generally a good place to start if you're unsure. Then it's as simple as shading like you would any other object, using white as your highlights, using your lightest greys as your mid-tones and the slightly darker greys for your shading. Start out light until you get the hang of it and then bring in those darker greys as you become more confident. The easiest way to know where to add shadows is to use a reference photo if you have one. Otherwise, I have some videos to help you learn how to add shadows in your coloring pages and I'll link to them both in the description below and in my blog post. I started out using this Stormtrooper image on my iPad as a reference photo for this image, but after a little while, I found it was just as easy to add the shadows intuitively, thinking about where they would naturally fall, so I stopped using my reference. Keep your layers light here, and you'll find that you can do a lot of your shading with a single color. In fact, I chose five colors for this, and I'm only really using three plus my white pencil. You could do all of this with a single color and just adjust your pressure, but I do love using the extra colors available to add a little bit of volume and to make the blending easier. As I'm moving down towards the bottom of this image, I'm using more of my darker tones because these areas won't get as much natural light as my Stormtrooper's arms and head. Although I think I've gone a little darker than I would have liked in a few of these areas. Now for the blaster rifle. Coloring black is a bit like coloring white in that we don't just want to use a black pencil, we want to use a mix of colors to create some depth. In this case, if we just use a black pencil, we'd lose all the detail and end up with a silhouette. I'm not feeling massively confident about coloring this rifle because I've never actually colored a shiny black object before, but the process isn't too different to coloring other metallic objects like I've shown you in my gold video, and I've got a reference image here. So let's just go for it. I'm using two dark grays and my white pencil to give me the shading and highlights I think I'll need, and I'm going to put the highlights in first, then fill in the areas around it and hope for the best. So I guess that worked. Actually, I'm really happy with how that came out when I look at it from this side camera. So if you ever don't like your work, take a big step back, take a photo, look at the photo instead of your art because it definitely helps to see it from a fresh perspective. With my Stormtrooper done, you can see the huge difference and basic shading has made from the original white drawing. But I also want to take this a step further today and have some fun. Like I said at the start, coloring white is all about texture and lighting. In this first example, I've used a very basic lighting technique and simple texture that you can try on most white objects. 
But what if our stormtrooper finds himself in a bit of a situation? I'd love to try coloring this page again, but using some lighting from another scene from one of the Star Wars movies or games where the environment isn't perfectly lit and our white character doesn't look so picture perfect and clean. I love this picture from the Star Wars Battlefront game. I think we should try to create something like this. But first, please take a moment to press that like and subscribe button while YouTube probably serves you an ad right about now. So let's start by looking at the colors in this image as an example. As you can see, our white has suddenly a much bigger range of colors. This picture actually has two different light sources. We've got a warm golden light coming from an explosion on the left and a cool light coming from the environment on the right. This is creating some interesting shadows right down the middle of our Stormtrooper's face and there's a lot of texture in our Stormtrooper from the damage done through whatever he has faced up to this point. When it comes to using a reference image like this that doesn't match my image exactly, I'm focusing mostly on the colors and values of the shadows. It does help that my Stormtrooper is the same character, although his pose is different. So we can't just copy this image, but we can use it as a guide to create a similar scene in our coloring page. In this case, I'm looking at the colors that the golden shadow has, and I'm using the knowledge that I already have about lighting and shadows to adapt this to my own drawing. It might take some practice if you've never done this before. So that's where it's always good to work in light layers so you can make adjustments as you go and darken your colors if certain areas don't look right later on. Before I do too much lighting, let's roughen up our Stormtrooper a bit and add some dust and scratches. By doing this in our base layer, a lot of these scratches will disappear or become less obvious when I add more color on top, so I can go a little overboard now and not worry too much about him looking too damaged. To add the scratches, I'm just using a sharp point on my pencil and just picking different areas to scribble on in small straight lines. Back to our main colouring, I'm continuing to work in light layers and just build up the shadows. By the end of this, there will be almost no actual white left on our white character. And yet because we know the context of our character and recognize the role that lighting plays, we can still see that this character is supposed to be white or at least a light gray metal. I would never think to put a shadow right down the middle of the face like this, so this is where a reference photo can be a really good way to challenge yourself to try something new. You don't have to follow it exactly, but it can be a great way to learn light and shade in particular. In fact, I have a whole video about advanced shading techniques where I talk more about this if you want to learn more about my own process. I'm trying really hard to resist the urge to burnish anything because I want to make sure I'm completely happy with my colors and lighting. Once you burnish your colors by using harder pressure with your pencil, it's much harder to make further adjustments. So if I want to add more contrast later, it will be much harder to do so.
for the blaster rifle, I'm taking the same approach that I took for the first page, because even though I wasn't confident at the time, I'm really happy with how that turned out. The only difference here is that I'll add a touch of yellow to bring in that warm lighting to match this scene. Now for the background. Last week I've just done a video full of ideas on colouring backgrounds and I am very tempted to try some Distress Oxides again or something similar for this background today because I think it would work really well. The only problem is that I only have a few very bright colours and that's just not going to work for this scene. So instead I'm doing a base layer of markers and I'll use my pencils to add the texture on top. I'm not going to recreate the war scene to the same degree as our reference image, but I do like the colors and so I'd like to bring some blues and even a bit of a muddy purple into the sky along with that warm ground. So I'm just creating some quick swatches here to see which pencils and markers will work well together in the colors that I'm trying to achieve because sometimes pencils can look quite different on top of the markers compared to just drawing straight on the paper. I'll block out my main colors of the background in markers first, and I'm not too worried about perfect blending because we'll add that kind of detail with the pencils. My main goal with the pencils is to blend my background and add a bit of haze and texture, but also to create that slight light source on the left that suggests that there's a war scene in the distance that's causing that warm light here on the Stormtrooper. And with that, we're done. While you might not be ready for a scene like this, I definitely encourage you to give the basic version of coloring white a try. All you really need is a few grays with the same tone and to follow the same techniques of shading that you would use for any other color. And if you need help with that, I've got a video coming up here in a moment to show you the basics. But first, please enjoy this deleted scene that I found from the Star Wars trilogy. Darth Vader. I should have known you were behind this. You have been caught using the death grip while holding your colored pencils. I don't know what you're talking about. There is no wrong way to create. You are a liar. You must follow the rules of art. Take her away. 